What if I told you GitOps does not require you to use GitHub? And GitOps does not mean getting rid of DevOps. And what the heck does Git as the single source of truth actually mean? In this video, we will learn all that in a simple way. And how do I know all this? Well, that's what I do in my day job. Hello guys and girls, my name is Raj. I'm a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS for containers and serverless. Previously, I was a Distinguished Cloud Architect at Verizon. I'm also a published Udemy and Pluralsight author. All right, let's get started. To understand the future, we must study the past. Let's start with our good old DevOps. How does a CI CD flow for Kubernetes look like? Your developer checks in the code in a code repository such as GitHub or AWS Code Commit. When we talk about codes for Kubernetes, we mainly mean two things. First, the Docker file, which defines the container image. Second, the manifest, which defines the deployment, scaling, and other configuration for your application. Once the code is checked in, a build process starts. In this example, we are using AWS code build, which builds the Docker container image and pushes the image to a image repository such as Amazon ECR. And then this code build deploys the manifest file into a running Kubernetes cluster, in this case, Amazon EKS. The step one, two, and three is CI or continuous integration and step four is CD or continuous deployment. But what if things go wrong? Maybe you have a hands-on guy in your team with access to live cluster and he just runs bunch of kubectl apply commands and changes the number of replicas or even the container image. Furthermore, maybe he deletes some of the running softwares in the cluster such as Datadog simply because he does not like dogs. How would you go back to the stable previous state for the cluster? You have to rerun the CD part to deploy the manifests again to the running cluster. But only if someone detects something is wrong. If someone changed the number of replicas and the container image to a previous version or even delete Datadog, your application might not fail. And it could be in that bad state where the Datadog is not getting any data for quite some time before someone notices something is amiss. Also, rerunning CD components is tedious, sometimes manual and error prone. And if something goes wrong during the CD, it's really stressful to restart the DevOps pipeline. Hence, GitOps were born. If you think about a traditional CI CD flow for EKS, it's more of a push model where the AWS code build is pushing the deployment and the manifest files to the Kubernetes cluster. Now let's take a look at GitOps, which is more of a push plus pull model. With GitOps, the CI part remains same. So the developer checks in the code in a code repository, the container image is built and gets pushed into a repository. But the CD or continuous deployment part is different. In this case, in the Kubernetes cluster, a software constantly run and checks with the repository, hence the term git and keeps the cluster in sync. But what does this actually mean? I'm pretty sure you guys and girls are still not clear. So let's take a look at that. Let's say the Catman is back. But in this case, the CI is being done by traditional DevOps tools and CD is being done by GitOps tool, for example, Flux. So the Catman went ahead and deleted Datadog pods and let's say also changed some of the deployment configuration. But remember, the GitOps tool is constantly checking with deployment manifest files or Helm charts in GitHub. So it immediately detects that the state of the cluster deviated from the desired state 
defined in Git. And Flux will immediately and automatically revert the Kubernetes cluster to the state as defined in the manifest file or the Helm chart file defined in the Git. So it will immediately restore the datadog pod. It will revert back the number of replicas, the container image, or any other changes that this person has done. The state of the cluster is defined by whatever is defined in Git. That's why we say Git becomes the single source of truth. It sends alert to appropriate team with the audit trails and this team removes unnecessary access from Catman so that only GitOps can make changes and maybe in the process convinces him that, hey, dogs are cool too. So one misconception is GitOps can only be worked with Git, which is not true. GitOps can also work with code repository such as AWS code commit. And remember, GitOps only take care of the CD part and not the CI part. CI part you can do with any of your existing CI tools such as AWS code build, GitHub actions, or Jenkins. Currently, GitOps can be done by either Flux or Argo. When you set up Flux or Argo, you will be prompted to point to a code repository and it would ensure that the cluster config matches that code repository and automates your deployments. GitOps can also change the manifest if you want. So when you install these tools, you can define what way you want your GitOps tool to behave. So for example, if someone comes and changes the container image in a deployment running within the cluster, so Flux can detect that it deviated from the desired state, but instead of reverting the cluster back to the state defined in the manifest or Helm charts in the Git, it can modify the manifest file in the Git instead and update the container image in the deployment file. But this is only advisable in development, not in staging or production. So in summary, GitOps periodically syncs the running cluster with the desired state in Git or other code repos. It works with both vanilla manifest files such as deployment YAML file, HPA, etc. or it works with Helm charts as well. This enables reduced learning curve than DevOps because the CD part is being done using Kubernetes constructs so the team does not need to learn the CD with traditional DevOps tool and it also increases security because CI and CD permissions are separated and also there are less number of components. But GitOps does not mean getting rid of DevOps. As we saw, the CI part is still being done with DevOps. Also, GitOps only works with a running Kubernetes cluster. The DevOps CD still needs to be used to spin up the cluster for the first time. Once that cluster is up, GitOps can be used to create other Kubernetes clusters. Also, GitOps doesn't mean you should strictly have to use GitHub. You can use other code repositories. If you like this video and want to learn more about Kubernetes and EKS, check out my highest rated Rocking Kubernetes with Amazon EKS, Fargate, and DevOps course in Udemy. I have given the links in description. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. Uh, if you like this video, if you found this video helpful, learn something new, uh, please do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, smash that like button, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, this is still a relatively small channel. Help us grow the channel so that we can do more awesome things. All right, guys and girls. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.